it's more trucks, but now it's more trucks in winter. Yes, they, winter they means trucks, 20, right? 21 Silverado. Here's an easy way to think of this one. It is the RST, the Rally Sport trim level, mm -hmm. and it also has the All-Star Edition Plus, which is essentially the Texas edition without Texas. So for everybody that doesn't live in Texas, Louisiana, Arkansas, and Oklahoma, and New Mexico, and what's Texas you get the All-Star Edition, which is all the same stuff, <laughs> Yes. not in Texas. Without not in the, the Texas, Texas magic, yes. Exactly. Uh -huh. So easy way to think of it. You're watching Everyday Driver. We make a TV show, podcast, and YouTube channels dedicated to great cars, driving adventures, and helping you find a car you'll love. Subscribe and hit the bell so you don't miss a thing. But this also has the Z71 package, which is the off-road package, skid plates, mm -hmm, rancho suspension, mm -hmm. beefier, makes you want to do more truck kinds of things. Now set up for more off-roading, theoretically, yes, yes. But I think the big news about this truck is the engine. Mm -hmm. We've driven three liter diesel pickups before. As a matter of fact, we drove the Ram 1500 mm -hmm. with their diesel. It makes a lot of power, it's very quiet. Yes. But the difference with this truck is it is an inline six. BMW, Mercedes, Toyota's had a lot of success with the inline six engine. Mm. And here is one, it's a diesel. And you might think diesels are a dirty word. They're, they're no good, don't buy diesel unless you're a truck owner. Yeah. It is not embarrassing yeah. to own this engine in this truck. It makes so much good power, it's not embarrassing. You know, what is it? Like, is it like 300 something horsepower, but it's 460 Under. pound feet of torque? It's 277. It yeah. seems the, low. The key thing, though, low. is now that you're making me think about it, we got a three liter straight six. Can we put this engine in the super and just see what happens? Let's <laughs> just right. do that. Let's just it's, do it. It's a three liter six it's cylinder. Three, it's six. all the same, right? Let's just put an inline yeah. six diesel in the. In the uh -huh. Let's see what the internet would do with that. It is a diesel straight six <laughs> three liter super. That'd be fantastic. But this happens to be one of five engines available in this car. Yes. There is a 2.7 liter four-cylinder turbo, this three liter straight six diesel, a 4.7 liter, I believe, V6, yeah. then a 5.3 yeah. liter V8, and then the 6.2 liter V8. And I find it interesting that this diesel, the reason you buy the diesel, let's be honest, is because you got the exact same amount of torque as the big V8, right. but not the right. big V8 gas mileage. However, it's not astoundingly better gas mileage. I mean, in a perfect Which world... Which is surprising, because you might that's get, why this engine was invented totally. and conceived. In a perfect world, you might get six might get six or eight miles per gallon better. But in your city yeah. driving, it's like one or two. When we first had this truck delivered, it sat for a day. Okay. It was super cold while it sat. Okay. It was actually very funny, because it was covered in snow when I first got in it. So it had about an inch of snow on it. So I didn't realize, they hadn't told us, I didn't realize it was a diesel. So I just got oh. in it, oh. hopped in, hit the start button, and everything lit up, and the truck just sat there. And I thought, why is it sitting there? And after about What's a five happening? or six count of the glow plugs, it fired up right away. But I was like, oh, it's a diesel. Of course, I didn't see the Duramax badges okay. on the side. Okay. Didn't know it was All a right, diesel. Fair enough. So I got myself a little bit surprised by it. And then that initial, I mean, it was cold. This is like well below freezing. Really? Okay. By then the initial like minute or so, it smelled like a diesel. I was like, oh, there's a big truck parked there in, the, in the driveway. And then it became a little more like, all right, let's just hop in the diesel and go. And then you have this power all the time, which is the reason, let's be honest, you buy a truck like this. Indeed. Well, I'm sure the EPA would frown on a coal button somewhere, but I, I wish for it, to be honest. <laughs> I'm going four high. We're going okay. up one of our favorite roads here. Yes, one of our favorite off-road style roads. Shift we end up taking progress. a lot of. Here we go. We take a lot of trucks on. In fact, we've taken the Titan up this road. We took the Tundra up this road yeah. in the winter before. So this is a good winter road for us. It isn't we very well maintained. It's not impassable. Which is perfect for our There's purposes. a lot of people that live up here, but it isn't very well maintained. And we, we also get, as we mentioned before, this is a press car without winter tires in the middle of winter, which is right. always an adventure that we don't necessarily like, but it does make for fun. You get to see that the four-wheel yeah, drive works. for sure, for sure. Well, as far as trucks go, this is not one that's going to make you change brands. Hmm. If you're a Chevy person, you're going to love it. It's yeah. great. It's yeah. fine. But the competitors are pretty intense. They're pretty awesome. There's trucks I would take over this mm. just because of styling and interior alone. Okay. Because all the trucks sold with a three liter diesel are pretty comparable, comparable in terms of trim level yeah. and features. Yeah. 
This particular one, though, I think is the sweet spot in between having a truck you're not worried about and using it for truck-like things. Mm -hmm. You're going to get it dirty and kind of dinged up a little bit, but it's also luxurious enough, has enough features mm -hmm. to make you feel like it's worth the money. Yes. This one is just under $57,000. Mm -hmm. What's crazy is if you go truck buying right now, and we've driven all of them, if you go truck buying right now and you want to get a mid-grade truck with normal car amenities, you're spinning somewhere in the $50,000 range. Just and it's not to hard it. to break yeah. 60. Yeah. So the fact that this is just under 57, I think is directly competitive with everybody else for sure. price wise. For sure. And I also agree that when you climb into this, you go, this feels nice. One of the things that you and I always discuss though, is using trucks for non-truck usage because it happens all the time. Just driving around, living with them. Yeah, this the is your only peep car. People watch these truck. reviews we do on trucks yeah. and they get mad at us because we aren't towing a huge thing and we aren't off-road guys and whatever. Hey, but look like a house. Let's tow it off its foundation. But but my point is, though, we drove all the rest of the trucks in Atlanta. I grew up in Texas. Right. Most people drive pickups without anything in the bed. They're going through Starbucks right. and right. they're commuting to the office. Yeah. That's a lot of truck usage. Maybe it gets tows every now and then, but that means your daily ride matters. Definitely. Your day-to-day -day ride Definitely. matters. And I actually think this rides pretty well, off-road or on-road. And I think it rides better than the GMC Sierra that we had the last time we had a GM Definitely truck. agreed with that. When this styling came out a few years ago, I wasn't all that jazzed about it. <laughs> That's being kind. <laughs> Look, designers have a great time with trucks and mm -hmm. big cars because there's so much surface area, it, tur it turns into a cartoon feast of mm -hmm. giant shapes and oversized everything. <laughs> Look at the front. I like this arrowhead shape that comes through the doors, that sculptural shape that defines the fenders, but also uses the entire hood to define the technology of the lighting. Lighting mm. has gotten very tiny. Mm -hmm. Truck designers used to rely on the lights as the main sty styling element sure. and then design everything from there. Lighting doesn't need to be that big anymore. Mm. So what do truck designers do now that you still have a huge front flat area? That's getting bigger too. tiny lights. You're right. How do you do huh. that? So with the integration of the style all the way through this arrowhead shape and the sides of the truck bed aren't flat. They're pretty swollen. You can mm. look down the fender there. So I do like what they're doing. The trim level definitely helps having some painted area. But what they've done is continue through the interior here. This interior, it's our understanding, is going to be going away because this one is sort of the old interior. It mm. doesn't compete with Ford and Ram. Mm. It's Reminds me of the uh, the aughts, you know that soft, bubbly GM styling sure, with yeah, these yeah. radiuses oh, yeah. everywhere and big cartoony oversized shapes. It's our understanding that this Silverado will now get the interior out of the Tahoe and Suburban, mm. which has the push button transmission Let's hope instead not. of the lever. The lever's better. I agree, but that just means this is the last iteration of this interior mm. with the tree mounted shifter that you can buy. It's one of those things I kind of want to I kind of want to make fun of it a little bit because it is so old school and then at the same time I love it. It's, it's great. It's familiar. It, and it it's works. Yes. That's that's too bad to think about that going away. I was thinking yep. about this in relation to that Tahoe we just had and did think about the fact that the Tahoe is where we're going. Mm -hmm. And yeah. it made me a little bit sad because I think for trucks yeah. this should be the feel. I agree. I mean, this is the last interaction. You can grab yeah. this and yeah. shift with your thumb on here. It's actually pretty good. It works yeah. well. 10-speed transmission in this beast, which is actually necessary. I think this is the first iteration where I can justify hmm. having a 10-speed transmission just because of the diesel and getting all this torque out of this thing, Yeah, which yeah, is yeah. nice. The hierarchy of buttons in the interior here is very well laid out. Agreed. You have the mechanical controls to the left of the steering wheel, the screen, HVAC, and all the rest of the buttons, none of which relate to each other right across here. So what do you do with the hazards mm -hmm. and you know everything else? The start-stop technology, you put all those in a uniform row, it makes sense and it's easy to understand. It's the old school, I get it. Yes. It just works. Yes. This is a place where you can get work done. You can hop in here with leather work gloves on, done. You can hop in here with winter gloves That's on, a great point. done. You don't have to work with the screen at all. You can't, look, it's got Apple CarPlay, all the normal stuff. Sure. It has all that car tech in it. Yeah. But this is yeah. built for work and it's built to work no matter what the weather or situation. And I do appreciate that in a truck. 
That's something I don't want to see go away in trucks either. And this does that well. In spite of the fact I agree with you, it looks old. <laughs> the screen is small. Yeah, the screen is modern, yeah. but it's small. Agreed. It's not like an Atari Agreed. screen. But this is a screen, honestly, that could fit in a small sports car. Like Pong on my screen. <laughs> yeah. Can you this is a screen that could fit in a sports car, though, if you think about it. it. It's is. like a small screen. And, and you know, Probably the RAM, a sports car. The RAM looks like something out of a Tesla at this point, which is great. Yeah. But I do like, in a truck, I like big knobs, big buttons, stuff that can work yep. with gloves that you don't have to think twice about. You just look in and you go, yeah, it's a truck. It just works. I mean, that's the nice part about it. Everything about it feels old school. Even the diesel, just it feels old school, but that's good because it works. You're mm. familiar with it. you got to drive this thing. I will. Okay. I'm just climbing in. Okay. I almost need my crampons and some rope. But I do have to say that this is one of those things where I drove this here in the winter yeah. without winter tires on it. I've driven it quite a few times. I've, I've driven this truck actually Good. quite a bit, more than some of the other trucks we've had Good. lately. Excellent. And I realized a couple things. First off, I think this is in the top, I would say top third of ride quality. Okay. If I think about okay. this, it, it, it is better than that GMC Sierra that we had. Which I, I find agree. Interesting. That. Heck yeah. It does have that kind of constant vibration on the road that an unloaded pickup that's just, just has. Solid it axle. just has. Yeah. So that's definitely the thing. But yeah. I think in general, the ride is pretty good. And I did, I did fake myself out, like I think a lot of people do as well. What do you mean? Where you put it in four high. And you feel like you don't You're need invincible. winter tires anymore. You're invincible. Yeah. I'll be fine without winter tires. And then something happens and it gets a little slick and you realize, yeah, that four wheel drive is not gonna save me. No. Well, only when I had it in two high. Okay, yeah. Then it was fun. Yeah. You know. Right. But but I am aware of the fact that you put it in four high and it does it it, it makes up for it a bit and it kind of starts to convince you little you'll bit. be fine. Little the bit. problem is the stopping. Yeah. Because this yeah. is nearly six thousand pounds. I mean they all are. It's, They're all exactly. Heavy. And it's sure. not gonna stop quick. All of a sudden, because you have four-wheel drive, that's not going to help you with the stopping. <laughs> Agreed. But it does get you out of situations where you're just like, oh, it's a little bit slick here. I'll put it in four-wheel drive. I'll just pull down that driveway. But just don't have to stop fast. Yeah, that's right. the key. Right. Well, the storage in this truck is pretty awesome. It's great. They're huge. Mm -hmm. The back seat is enormous. It's very big. The seats, the centers of the seats open, so there's mm -hmm. cubby holes. And I like that because it keeps stuff out of sight when you you know, you know park your truck, that kind of thing. Yep. So I do like the, the storage and the usage of that. It's about time that designers started using this huge space mm -hmm. to store everything. It's almost like That's minivan a good thinking. Thing. It kind it's of is. minivan thinking in a truck continue. where you just go, okay, we've got a lot of space. How do we fill yeah. it? What do we do that's intriguing? They've done a very good job with that. Yeah, I like that. I like the diesel. The transmission is good. Mm -hmm. And the ride quality is fine. As far as a truck, you can't go wrong with owning this truck. Mm -hmm. And from a reliability standpoint, everybody has the discussion. And again, it depends on who you are, what kind of truck tattoo you have. We're all born with a truck ones, tattoo, are we? We are. Yeah. Well, we get them just after birth. Well, the, depending on the parents. The doctor That's, decides. Yeah. Now, Either that now, or who brand. is the kid? Yeah, exactly right. Yep. <laughs> but at that point, this isn't going to convince Ram or Ford buyers to come over to Chevy. That's a good point. Yeah, I hear that. This will be great for the Chevy crowd, mm -hmm. and people are going to buy this truck, and they're going to like it. But I feel like there's so many other things they could have done, and in in everything, in I feel like Chevy played it safe. All the companies put all their dollars into designing and engineering their pickup trucks because yep. this is what sells. Yep. They're all good. So you have to choose it based on the flavor. Do you like being here? Do you like how it rides? Mm -hmm. Do you like the engine? The best part about the engine is because it's inline six and it's so smooth, that means you can rev it like a gas motor. Yes. You can this, get after it. This gets to 5,500 for Redline and it's a diesel. It's not like it, you know, I couldn't peters out that. at 4,000 and oh, I got the big I'm, diesel. I'm used to the diesels that are 4,500. Yeah. This has got yeah. a thousand extra RPM because it is a straight six. And honestly, I like this engine and driveline better than that diesel ram we had the engine this straight that six, was pretty smooth it, it was, was really good but this straight six and and this 10 speed i actually like better than the ram but the ram rode better yeah for sure and Absolutely. i'm also surprised to say this we had the toyota tundra trd pro yeah in army green yeah. on this very road which i like i think this rides better this has the z71 package yeah i think this rides better than the trd pro tundra now i'm not I saying like the, the tundra is bad personally I know you do. I know you do. I think this has a better ride off-road and on than the TRD Pro. Now, yeah. somebody with a Toyota is currently 
cussing me out in the comments. It I know you are. It happens. But, but that comes back to the tattoo thing you were mentioning. But I was really <laughs> thinking about this in relation to that. Okay. Because back to your point, I don't think anybody is leaving Toyota to get this Chevy. No, but what nobody's I like, leaving any brand to come get this truck. Totally. What I like about what we get to do is we get to come in without any brand bias mm -hmm. and just go, what do we like, what do we not? And I do think that the Ram is still winning on interior Definitely. tech Definitely. and it's winning on ride. <laughs> There's always going to be the war of numbers in pickup trucks. Yes. More horsepower, more towing capacity, more, 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 more. There we go. Yeah, get it a little loose. Mm -hmm. Most of these trucks, for most things you're going to do, are about the same. Mm -hmm. I hate to say that, but you're right. The Ram... People don't want to hear that, but you're right. The Ram does have more towing capacity. If that truly is the deal breaker, mm -hmm. I hear you. Numbers do matter. Numbers are what sells. Mm -hmm. But ultimately, you have to like being here. You know what I am surprised by with this diesel engine, though? I'm surprised that the towing capacity isn't better. This has a 9,000 pound towing capacity. Let's look, let's look at that from two different angles. On one level, 9,000 pounds is not a small amount of towing capacity. No, that's a that's lot. That's a good amount. But yeah. the big 6.2 liter V8 will do 11. Now, 9,000 is a lot. It's a lot. It's a lot. Yes. But if you're looking yes. for 11,000, you can't get that with this diesel. But the trade off should be better fuel mileage. Yes. This should be worlds better, not slightly better. That not is a big thing. I, I totally agree. Better. I totally agree. This should be I'll bet you high get, 30s. I bet you could probably get 30 out of this, right conditions, leave yeah. it in two-wheel drive, yep. especially if you get the two-wheel drive only. Yes. You probably could. But it should be better than that for investing in a diesel, yeah. which costs you more. Mm -hmm. The Ram diesel is something like $3,800 more. This one is $2,500 on top of the price of the truck. Mm -hmm. So to get more towing capacity and theoretically better fuel economy, you're now paying a lot more money. Yeah, I think yeah. this is a very solid competitor from Chevy, but I agree. I think the Ram may be the only truck right now in trucks that gets people out of other brands. I agree to that. I think everybody Absolutely. else sells their version, but I have to also say this. This genuinely impressed me because we drove the GMC Sierra in our big truck comparison in yep, Atlanta, yep. and we liked it, but we had some major things we were disappointed by, and I got into the Chevrolet, which is supposed to be lesser than the Thinking GMC. Thinking it would be the same? Thinking it would be the same or worse, and I actually think it's better. 